Uh, we've got lots of wonderful people today. The King of Coral, Eric Whittaker, will be here shortly, and the Brazilian pianist Marcelo Branca, celebrating the roots of Bossa Nova. Villa Lobos will no doubt make an appearance, and uh, Marcelo is playing live. This from a recording last year of Chopin, a calming basses, a lullaby, 16 tiny variations, inspired maybe by a childhood song, The Moon Has Risen and the Dogs Are Asleep.
Mathilde Bratke playing Chopin at Berset's in D-flat major. And he will be uh, with us, not too distant future, to play live in the studio, the piano lid. That'll wake you up. Morning serenade and dance with mandolins. You probably noticed them from Romeo and Juliet. Music by Prokofiev with the Berlin Philharmonic and Ezra Pekka Saladin. You are listening to In Tune. Oh, I heard a note. That means we have a pianist in the room. (laughs) <laughs> Sunshine and rhythm, uh, the Brazilian pianist Marcelo Branca, subtle shining, hints of wildness, said the New York Times. Do you recognise that description? Yes, yes, I recognise Good. The description. <laughs> That's good. We like wildness in here. It's also like combined it. with elegance. It's, absolutely great. it's wonderful to have you with us. You're taking us to your home country of Brazil. Um, more of that in on, but I suspect um, Mr. Ville Lobos is going to figure pretty, pretty strongly, isn't he? Who else? Who else? I mean, is he the father, really, do you think? He's the father of Brazilian music, yes. Yeah. Vitor Villalobos. I know, and he's wonderful. And he owes a lot to Bach, too, so yes, we, can all, we can all connect. What, what, is it, uh, what is it going to be? This is called Amare Encheu, meaning that the ocean went up. This is part of the practical guide, which is a sort of map that he made about Brazil with 300 songs and pieces for piano, uh, making a sort of uh, X-ray of Brazilian uh, musical physiognomy. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Well, keyboard is yours. Thank you very much indeed. Amare Anshu, part of a, a, a little guide to Brazil by Villa Lobos, played live for us by Marcello Bradka uh, here in the studio and be back uh, in, in a moment or two to play more, taking us on, a, on an extra tour. Just stay exactly where you are and you will meet the classical mixtape at 7 o'clock and I can tell you that it starts tonight with George Friedrich Handel, always a welcome guest, as is Marcello Bradka, we've heard already, playing Villa Lobos. Uh, he's the World Heartbeat Music Academy in Battersea on Friday. Music from Debussy to, well, the pianist the New York Times lauded for his shining piano colour can tell me. You're taking, taking us on a tour, really, aren't you? Yes, it's a tour about the, the origins of Bossa Nova. Ah. Yes. Well, I mean, Bossa Nova is relatively recent. I mean, we're only talking, what, 50s, 1950s, 60s? Yes, if you take the official story, it is very recent. But uh, I like to think that Bossa Nova is all the, you know, the forms of arts take a long time to be Mm. formed. But it was back in 1917 or even before 1910 when uh, Villa Lobos was there in Brazil thinking about Paris and writing music, uh, French music, but he was in Brazil. And then he met Darius Milhaud, who influenced him a lot. So a lot of influences by Villa Lobos, by this impressionist music. And um, this was, let's say, a base for Bossa Nova to come later. Yeah, as, but it's a different, it's a different beat, isn't it? It's, it's changing the beat slightly, isn't it? Yes. Bossa Nova comes from the samba. The samba has a rhythm like this, more or less. I, I would do oh, it with yes, my please. mouth. Are you okay? going to dance, if you like? No, no. <laughs> Look, <laughs> listen to it. <laughs> this is the samba. Bossa Nova is a softer and 
more economical groove. You're a one-man entertainment centre. Yes. <laughs> you do everything. Dance and play at the same time. Do people dance to it a lot still? Well, Bossa Nova is not really, not a, really a dancing f- format, you know. Bossa Nova is more of a, um, an atmospheric music. A music for nostalgia, for mm. saudades. It's very much also reflecting the fado somehow. Oh, yeah. but, but if you take, for example, the official story of Bossa Nova, okay... It was more or less born in the 50s with Tom Jobim and Vinicius de Moraes. Then came João Gilberto. Then uh, uh, Stan Getz made his very famous uh, LP, Jazz Samba, who was a success. And then uh, Tom Jobim played with João Gilberto at Carnegie Hall. And that was an explosion of Bossa Nova all over the world. And then Frank Sinatra recorded The Girl from Ipanema. Yes, of course. But I have a more interesting story to tell you. About this. Oh, go on there. Go okay. on. Uh, well, there, there was a very important composer called Claudio Santoro, and he was a very atonal composer, a sort of Alpenberg from Brazil. And he was living in Vienna. And he, used, he was a communist, and he used to go to Moscow and Leningrad to give speeches and to give, uh, you know, conferences about music. And there in Russia, he met his translator, Leah. She was an extremely beautiful woman, and they fall in love, and he began to have an affair with her. So, back and forth from Vienna to Moscow, one day he arrives at the airport, and Leah was not there. There was a translator, a man. Leah was disappeared completely. The KGB discovered the affair and sent Leah probably to Siberia. So, Claudio Santoro was profoundly in love with Leah. He came back to to Vienna and then to Paris, where he met Vinicius de Moraes, the poet. And together they wrote the preludes and the songs of the love songs, which uh, is uh, over the poems of Vinicius de Moraes and it touches the pain of love. I was going to say, we're back to Sodades or whatever you call it. You know, it's it's more than that. It's, more it's, than it's, that. The, it's like your broken heart and very yeah. deep in your heart you are suffering because you never saw Leah anymore. <sighs> You're going to play one now, aren't you? Four, four preludes of the love songs. Yes, the very short preludes. All right, lovely. So we just imagine the love songs coming afterwards. Yes. But I'm sure the pain's in the music. Is in the music. OK. Marcello, thank you very much indeed. Let you make your way back to the keyboard.
Cello, thank you for preludes of love songs from the lovelorn Claudio Santoro. That's his public exotic life. He's another one who studied under Nadia Boulanger, co-founded the Brazilian Symphony Orchestra, and was born in Manaus, sort of the capital of the Amazon. I mean, anybody um, who will have seen it, wonderful uh, Herzog film, Fitzcarraldo, yes. is, is the opera house, the unlikeliest opera house in the world still there. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. And you know, when they constructed that opera house, all the square surrounding the opera house was made by rubber. So that the, the carriages would be okay going around without making so much noise for the people to, you know, enjoy the wow. opera. Amazing, no? Do they still do opera? Can they get people to but Yes, play? yes, absolutely. There, there are many festivals there and the, the, the theatre is very, very active. Although there are, you know, a lot of uh, insects there. So they need to make, uh, to make this sort of uh, treatment every month for the wood to okay. remain. So the opera house isn't eaten? Eaten by the insects, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look, you yourself are extraordinary. I mean, you started playing, um, well, you, you, is it true you, you debuted with the Sao Paulo Symphony Orchestra at 15 and that was after less than a year's studying the piano? Yes, that was a very... That is phenomenal. It was it was very scary for me because it was my first live concert in my life with the Sao Paulo Symphony Orchestra and I was quite nervous, And uh, but it was, you know, a surprise, a wonderful success. I got a award and wonderful reviews and all of a sudden I felt myself as a pianist and I felt that life as a pianist was going to be very glamorous and, you know, it was not it was, like that. It was glamorous. And it was glamorous <laughs> enough. But this was. You know, we've talked about this before. You you were very poor sight. I mean, you could hardly see then. And the, miraculously, not all that long ago, what 10, 50, 20 years ago, less than twenty years ago. Yes, less than twenty years ago. You managed to get the sight back. Yes, I, I I got well. I got the sight for the first time in my life in my left eye. eye? Uh, now I can see one hundred percent in my left eye. My right eye, just 10, but I was born with 7% in one eye oh. and 2% in another. Wow. I think it was because of that that music came into my life. Yeah, but listen, overcoming that is phenomenal in itself. Anyway, wonderful. What a magical moment that must have been. Yes, it was really magical. <sighs> Amazing. Well, it's magical to have you with us, and we're finishing our little tour uh, of Bossa Nova with uh, Jobim, who's a pretty major figure, isn't he? Absolutely. Tom Jobim is the father of Bossa Nova, and, uh, you know, the name of this piece I will play for you, it's Luisa. And it was funny because I came to um, Paolo Jobim's house 20 years ago, uh, who was the son of Tom Jobim, mm. and he gave me a cassette in which Tom Jobim uh, was with Chico Buarque de Holanda, another very important composer from Brazil. And he said in this recording, he said, Chico... The wine is in the fridge. Let me show you something that I wrote yesterday. The name is Luisa. And I swear to you, it was not me who made it. And he began to play. So I took this piece that was never really written, because after that they made arrangements and so on, yeah. and I took note by note, which was exactly uh, the, you know, the Luisa, just composed by Tom Jobim, 12 hours before that, very fresh. <sighs> Can't get fresher than that. Well, I'm sorry there's no wine in the fridge for you. Yes, you just more. have to imagine. I'm afraid it's virtual, <laughs> virtual wine in the fridge. Yes. But if I did, it would be the best bottle. Would I know, be I know. I'm the best bottle for you right now. I know. Now. Thank you so much. Eh? Marcella, thank you so much indeed. And here it is, Louisa, back among us.
Louisa departs. Ton Joubim. Uh, Louisa is played by Marcello Bradke. Marcello, thank you so very much. That was, that was, that was lovely. Thank you so much. For... And much more to come uh, with the, the tour around Bossa Nova. It's Friday at the World Heartbeat Music Academy in Battersea, Origins of Bossa Nova. Uh, everything from Debussy, Mio, Lira Lobos, of course, Jobim and Santoro as well. Exactly. Lovely to have you with us. It would, I, we played Chopin earlier. That's out now, isn't it? Recording is out. Yes, this recording is um, brand new. I just recorded l- uh, last year and uh, you played Le Bercez, which is yeah. my favourite piece by Chopin. Oh. Good, thank you. So, what's underneath? Is that the other one? And then, if it's uh, the Guia Pratico, which is a double CD devoted to uh, this, you know, 11 volumes of pieces uh, that um, made like a map of Brazilian musical physiognomy. Right. Fantastic. Great pleasure to have you as, as always. Come back to My you. pleasure, Sean. Thank you, Matilda. It's, it's um, 25 minutes to the hour, it is. Um, I think, sound the trumpets.